The 23rd World Congress of Dermatology represents an important event in the international dermatology calendar. During the 2015 scientific program, key advances in innovation in the area of dermatology were presented, debated, and discussed from a wide range of perspectives. In this short video, leading experts, Dr. Neil Shear, Dr. Maria Teresa Fernandez Figueres, Professor Eggert Stockfried, and Dr. Gary Goldenberg share their thoughts on some of the exciting developments in actinic keratosis. There are many risk factors for developing actinic keratosis. The most important risk factor is chronic exposure to UV radiation or sunlight. Actinic keratosis are more common in Caucasian patients, but can be seen in patients of all skin colors and types. AK is something that can develop into a skin cancer called the squamous cell carcinoma, or SCC. And the problem is, some of these might go away, some areas that are damaged might become squamous cell carcinomas on their own, even without going through the AK phase. So all AKs have the potential of becoming SCCs. The highlight of the recent symposium we had here in Vancouver was absolutely the new histology data which were presented from our Spanish colleague. So where we could learn that not only from an AK3 we will get an invasive squamous cell cancer, that most of the patients suffering under AK already have a risk with an AK1 to go into an invasive squamous cell cancer. Clinically, it's very important to, if, to know that there are two pathways because um, for many years dermatologists consider that only the actinic keratosis that were thick and hyperkeratotic had risk of progression into squamous cell carcinoma invasive type. Nevertheless, our study has demonstrated that even the thinnest actinic keratosis or a cancer field can be the origin of an invasive squamous cell carcinoma. The field-directed therapy is a very important part. It means you have to treat the entire field. The entire field means subclinical lesions as well as visible lesions to get rid of the whole sun-damaged skin. Only when you treat the entire field, you will get low recurrence rate. It's very important. If I were to give advice to healthcare professionals, all of them, I think it's just based on what, what I've learned going through the physician journey, looking after actinic keratosis and squamous cell carcinomas. And I don't think I would approach sun damaged skin, especially with actinic keratosis, as something that's benign and could be put off with moisturization or something simple like that. I think they do need to be seen, they do need to be diagnosed, and they do need to be managed as fully as possible to make sure that it doesn't progress to squamous cell carcinoma.